Inside our training program you will find the following sections. Section 1 Introduction to Ergonomics Terms, Concepts. Section 2 Evaluating your office workplace ergonomically. Section 3 Apply manual material handling modeling to hazard recognition. Section 4 Pre-planning, poor planning and problem solving ergonomic problems. Section 5 Ergonomics as a discipline background information. Section 6 Intro to Ergonomics Methodology Examples Let's continue with our training program sections. Section 7 Intro to Ergonomics Summary Section 8 Intro to Ergonomics Quiz This workshop has been designed as an introduction to the basic principles of ergonomics in the office and industrial workplace. It targets the workers, supervisors, and managers that are exposed to ergonomic risks in the office, industrial, construction environment. Human factors and ergonomics, commonly referred to as HF&E, also known as comfort design, functional design, and systems. One is the practice of designing products, systems, or processes to take proper account of the interaction between them and the people who use them. The field has seen some contributions from numerous disciplines, such as psychology, engineering, VR mechanics, industrial design, physiology, and anthropometry. In essence, it is the study of designing equipment, devices and processes that fit the human body and its cognitive abilities. The two terms human factors and ergonomics are essentially synonymous.
human factors and ergonomics is employed to fulfill the goals of occupational health and safety and productivity. It is relevant in the design of such things as safe furniture and easy to use interfaces to machines and equipment. Proper ergonomic design is necessary to prevent repetitive strain injuries and other musculoskeletal disorders, which can develop over time and can lead to long-term disability. Damn am I intelligent or what? Let's hope somebody from Hollywood noticed. However, the equipment noise can still be disruptive, annoying, or distracting. As a result, ambient sound levels should be kept below 55 decibels in the A scale dBA. Also, narrow band tones above ambient sound levels should be reduced. Thank goodness this programmer finally got around to showing us cute chicks who work here as MSTO. To ensure that prescribed corrective lenses provide a sufficient range of focus for computer monitor work, tell the examining ophthalmologist or optometrist that the employee's work involves using a computer monitor. When a computer user visits an ophthalmologist or optometrist who is prescribing eyewear for reading, the operator needs to inform the eye care specialist of the distance between the eyes and computer monitor. Hey is my lipstick on perfect? Be nice, cartoons have feeling too you know.
I found that using my graduated bifocals didn't work because the focal point for the correct distance to the monitor caused me to tilt my head back. Have you ever seen the 400 pound with bifocals? I was the sumo version of Alfred Hitchcock. Section 1 Health Considerations Psychosocial issues user-friendly software and adequate operator training are critical to a successful introduction. Training and orientation may be helpful. A person's response to change depends on whether the change is perceived as positive or negative. Although concern about on-the-job hazards related to computer monitor use during pregnancy has increased as more women of childbearing age are in the workforce, there is insufficient evidence available to data support the assumption that exposure to electromagnetic fields may cause birth defects and miscarriages. The following references are provided so that women of childbearing age who use computer monitors routinely at work, and their employers, can study the research.
section to evaluating a workplace exercise. In your own words define work area. The work area should be large enough to accommodate the operator, allow the full range of motions involved in performing the task, plus equipment and materials that make up the workstation. An effective work area should be limited to the convenient reach of the operator. I found a good rule of thumb regarding the layout of my desktop. Take a look at the drawing below. Equipment and or materials found inside the small arch, light blue, are tilted toward me at roughly 8 degrees. These are high use items. Medium use items are located inside the second arch, dark blue, and are tilted towards me at roughly 18 degrees. Does anybody realize how hard it is to make an ergonomically correct workstation for a 400 pound man? Let's hope so. Section 2. Evaluating your workplace. Adjustable lamps may be needed to provide supplemental light for reading printed documents. To control direct glare and reflected glare sources, the wall, furniture, and other equipment located near a VDT should not have highly reflective finishes. Walls can be painted with non-reflective, subdued color paint to reduce glare.
to reduce glare and reflection from overhead lights. Place the computer monitor work area between rows of overhead lights. Screen glare filters should be used as a last resort, since they can contribute to blurring and poor contrast of screen characters. Operator response to these is mixed. Nylon mesh filters are preferred over glass or plexi filters. Using screen filters is a supplementary solution and not a substitute for proper lighting. I am amazed at how much more relaxed I am now that the lighting problems have been taken care of. I don't make near as many errors and my neck and shoulders don't hurt as they used to from all the tension. Excuse me, I have a milkshake waiting for me that should definitely add 20 pounds to my waistline. Section 3 Modeling. Anything used to compare one thing with another is considered to be a model. Hi why all. They tell me that I'm a crash dummy but I prefer to think of myself as a model for safety. What do you think? Thank you Mr. Programmer for bringing us cute chicks back. A biomechanical model attempts to establish the physical stresses imposed on the musculoskeletal system while working. Sprains and strains have consistently been the major nature of injury, accounting for more than half of all disabling claims. Back sprains and strains are the single most frequent work injury, responsible for 25.3% of total claims in 2011. I now have a date with Sammy the Safety Sumo. We are going to a wrestling match.
Vertebra is one of the bony segments composing the spinal column. Compressive forces will affect the L5 per second wound disc. The nerves provide the energy to make the muscles work. Please note the nerve locations with regards to the locations of the discs. Twisting in the middle of a lift amplifies the negative results of forces on the lower back. For purposes of illustration consider the follow, the great herniated tomato experiment. Twisting causes multiple forces of stress on the L5 per second one disc even on a 400 pound guy like me.
The following model shows the source as a force on L5 per second one disc. Notice the arrow, angle from upper vertical of lower arm I have a big date with semi the safety sumo tomorrow and there better not be any other broads trying to muscle in on my big man. Section 4, Pre-Planning, Poor Planning, Problem Solving. Temperature and Humidity, Set Room Temperature Controls to Maintain Thermal Comfort. Sufficient Cooling and Ventilation. Avoid Overcrowding VDT Work Areas. Provide a fairly constant relative humidity level, 30-60% is recommended. Do not direct warm air units from central processing units, CPUs, and disk drives toward operators. Has anybody noticed that I am actually same as old lady and those other brought are just jealous of me? I will wrestle every last one of them. Character size should be sufficient for the viewing distance, that is based on a 20 inch viewing distance the minimum character height should be 1 9th of an inch. The screen should have user controls for character brightness and contrast. Screens which swivel horizontally and tilt or elevate vertically enable the operator to adjust for the viewing angle.
In practice, however, the character color is secondary to the need for adequate contrast and clarity of the display. Regular screen cleaning is necessary to maintain clarity of characters. Eyes in relation to the keys, when adjusting the screen height, the topmost line of the display should be at or slightly below the user's line of vision. In practice, however, the character color is secondary to the need for adequate contrast and clarity of the display. Regular screen cleaning is necessary to maintain clarity of characters. Eyes in relation to the keys, when adjusting the screen height, the topmost line of the display should be at or slightly below the user's line of vision. A movable keyboard with tilt angle adjustment from 0-25 degrees will allow for arranging the keyboard to suit the task and the physical needs of the operator. A matte finished keyboard surface reduces reflections, easing operator eye strain. A keyboard fitted with the restressed supports the heel of the operator's hand, minimizing both hand contact with sharp table edges. The wrist pad thickness should not exceed the height of the first row of keys on the keyboard.
Let's summarize what we just stated. The keyboard should have a thin profile to minimize wrist deviation. A movable keyboard with tilt adjustment from 0 to 25 degrees will allow for arranging the keyboard to suit the task and the physical needs of the operator. A keyboard fitted with a wrist rest supports the heel of the operator's hand. Let's summarize what we just stated. The keyboard should have a thin profile to minimize wrist deviation. A movable keyboard with tilt adjustment from 0 to 25 degrees will allow for arranging the keyboard to suit the task and the physical needs of the operator. A keyboard fitted with a wrist rest supports the heel of the operator's hand. Seat. An ideal seat pan length allows 3 to 3 minus 1 half inches from the front edge of the seat to the back of the lower leg at the knee, when the back contacts the back rest. The seat pan should not exceed 17 inches, or the front edge of the seat will press against the back of the legs and cause discomfort. Ideally, the chair height should be adjusted first and then the workstation adjusted in reality. However, the work surface height often cannot be adjusted. The chair height needs to be adjusted upward until the upper arm and forearm are at a 90 degree angle with work surface.
a footrest can then be added as needed to compensate for the increased chair seat height. The key here is that the padded seat contour should promote lower back contact with the backrest and have a rounded front edge. I am ready to ergonomically wrestle any woman who thinks Sema belongs to her. Let's go girls. It is preferable to have a chair with arm rests that can be adjusted to the height of the individual for the task being performed. Arm rests should be low and short enough to fit the chair under the work surface. Arm rests that are too high elevate the shoulders, causing stiffness or pain in the shoulder and neck muscles. The most comfortable arm rests are long enough to support the full arm at the base of the hand. The table surface height should be adjustable from 23 to 28 inches. Adjustable work tables and keyboards allow for different operators and a variety of tasks to be performed if a fixed height work table is used. The table surface and keyboard surface should be separate, with the table surface about 29 inches high and the keyboard surface about 27 inches high. All work table surfaces should have a matte finish to minimize glare and reflection. The terminal table should also have sufficient leg room, depth and width, so there are no obstructions for knees, legs, shins or thighs. 
The minimum depth for knee space is 15 inches at knee level and January 2nd 23 inches at toe level. The minimum width for knee space is 20 inches. Operator's feet do not rest completely on the floor once the chair height has been adjusted, a footrest should be provided. Footrests should be adjustable in inclination, not restrict leg movement, and be easy to remove. A footrest should be large enough to support the soles of both feet and have no more than 30 degrees inclination. The top of the footrest should be covered with a non-skid material to reduce slippage. It's cute chick time again. Am I adorable or what? Back to business, physical ergonomics, concerned with human anatomy, and some of the anthropometric, physiological and biomechanical characteristics as they relate to physical activity. Organizational ergonomics, concerned with the optimization of socio-technical systems, including their organizational structures, policies, and processes. Cognitive ergonomics, concerned with mental processes, such as perception, memory, reasoning, and motor response, as they affect interactions among humans and other elements of a system. Cross-specializations, environmental ergonomics is concerned with human interaction with the environment as characterized by climate, temperature, pressure, vibration, light. Ethnographic analysis, using methods derived from ethnography, this process focuses on observing the uses of technology in a practical environment. Focus groups are another form of qualitative research in which one individual will facilitate discussion and elicit opinions about the technology or process under investigation. Iterative design, also known as prototyping, the iterative design process seeks to involve users at several stages of design, to correct problems as they emerge. Meta-analysis, a supplementary technique used to examine a wide body of already existing data or literature to derive trends or form hypotheses to aid design decision subjects in tandem. Two subjects are asked to work concurrently on a series of tasks while vocalizing their analytical observations. Surveys and questionnaires, a commonly used technique outside of human factors as well. Surveys and questionnaires have an advantage in that they can be administered to a large group of people for relatively low cost. Task analysis, a process with roots in activity theory. Task analysis is a way of systematically describing human interaction with a system or process to understand how to match the demands of the system or process to human capabilities.
Okay, let's take a look at Neosha safe lifting guidelines as a method of reducing our potential material handling exposure. Intro to Ergonomics Summary Office Ergonomics, pre-plan your computer workstation factoring in all of the physical elements lights, tables, monitors, keyboard, mouse, etc. Manual Material Handling, use NIOSH safe lifting guidelines by lifting with your legs not your back while keeping your head straight. Ergonomics Background Info, the science of ergonomics was born from several professions including Physical Cognitive and organizational ergonomics cross specialization ergonomics is being used in such professions as highway safety to minimize human machine environment interaction. Intro to Ergonomics Summary, Continued The keyboard should have a thin profile to minimize wrist deviation. A movable keyboard with tilt adjustment from 0 to 25 degrees will allow for arranging the keyboard to suit the task and the physical needs of the operator. A keyboard fitted with a wrist rest supports the heel of the operator's hand. Check this guy out. He is not only ergonomically correct but you may have noticed that he is also politically correct as well. Just like my main man.
Sammy the safety sumo, all 400 pounds of him. Sammy the safety sumo here gentle folks. All good things must come to an end and it's time for your favorite sumo wrestler to take a break. I will be back on public demand maybe to wrestle Dr. Death or The Undertaker. Was his name The Undertaker or The Underwriter? Never mind.